Oh hey, it's that time of the year again. 8 p.m. For this special occasion, I want to talk about one of my childhood treasures, most notably one of the most popular horror video game franchises of all time. Five Nights at Freddy's. That's such a long title for a video game. Five Nights at Freddy's, or FNAF in short, took the world by storm in the year 2014. 2014 was a great time for a six-year-old me, basically the pinnacle of my childhood. I had a lot of great memories during this time. Before the FNAF craze, I remember hopping on YouTube and watching gameplays of Happy Wheels, Slenderman, and Minecraft. Then this came and it changed everything. I also remember watching and listening to fan-made music videos, especially by the games and the living tombstone. Yep, here's the list of my favorite music genres. So much FNAF stuff happened here and there. The community is massive, and by that, take a look at this graph. Say what you will about the franchise, it has a lot of impact on the horror video game genre. So let's take a look at each entry of the franchise and try to criticize what made these games good and why some of them are my least favorite. We'll be taking a look at the mainline entries first, then the spin-offs. Now, before we begin, I want to say that I won't be delving into the entirety of the series' lore. It's mainly because there are still a ton of mysteries left unsolved and the lore itself is complex, especially to newcomers. So we'll only be taking a look at how each game looks and how they play. First up on Five Nights at Freddy's, Five Nights at Freddy's. So here's the core gameplay, you are in an office and it is your job to make sure that the animatronics are in their area, oh no. You have to use the cameras to figure out their location. You can't move anywhere so in order to survive you can shut the doors on both sides of your office. Beware of the power as the more you use it the faster it depletes. Once it depletes, it's game over. Unless. You have to make it to 6am, once you do it's on to the next night and you have to do this for a total of 5 nights. It gradually gets harder with each one. There are two other secret nights. Night 6 you can unlock by just beating the previous 5 nights, and the custom night that you can unlock by beating night 6. The custom night allows you to customize the difficulty for each animatronic. For each animatronic, we have Freddy, Golden Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy. Bonnie and Chica can be easily found while Freddy can only appear in very few areas. Foxy stays in one location and you have to keep an eye on him as he will charge to your left door. Once he is doing that, quickly shut the left door until he is gone. But what about jump scares? This game has one of the best jump scares in the series as they look really real. The ambiance and the audio cues are really well put out especially if you're playing the game with headphones on. This is also one of the hardest entries in the franchise, for me. From my experience back when I was 6 years old, I was able to breeze through the first 3 nights in the one go. Night 4 was the worst one, possibly even worse than the last night. Beating this game for the first time was so rewarding that I forgot there were 2 more nights that I had to finish and from that moment forward, I never played the game again for a few weeks. What I think made this game so great gameplay wise is the power supply mechanic. It's the only entry with this mechanic. Sure, FNAF 2 has that but I don't think it leaves much impact compared to the first game. With this mechanic, a lot more strategy is required to complete a single night. Playing with headphones on helps since you can hear audio cues that determine whether that specific animatronic is in that area. But wearing headphones on can also make the jump scares leave much more impact. So that's the first FNAF game, 9 out of 10. Great design, great gameplay, and great jump scares. Next is FNAF 2. This game has some new changes compared to the last. You can toggle your flashlight on your cameras and the vents. There are no more doors that you can shut so you're much more vulnerable. The only thing in your arsenal is the flashlight and the spare Freddy mask. This mask is used to fool any animatronic into believing that the player is an animatronic themselves. Speaking of animatronics, there are too damn many of them here. We got Toy Freddy, Bonnie and Chica, Withered Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, Mangle, and the Puppet. Oh, you also can't forget Withered Golden Freddy and Balloon Boy. Jesus, that's 11 animatronics. 
The puppet is the most interesting of the bunch. We have this jukebox that we need to keep playing. If we don't, then game over. Then we have Balloon Boy who steals your torch's batteries and has this annoying laugh. And let me tell you, this game is tough. Since there is no animatronics you need to keep track of, in addition to the flashlight's batteries and the puppet's jukebox, this game is much more intense and fast paced. This game is Ultimate Custom Night before Ultimate Custom Light is released. Now looking at this game from the outside, it's much more lively and that perfectly sets with the sheer difficulty of this game. As for the jump scares, they look a bit cheap compared to the first game. They are scary no doubt but they just feel a bit cartoonish to me sometimes. Sometimes after you got jump scared, a little mini game pops out that has something to do with the story. After that, another jump scare. 6 out of 10. Looks okay. Incredibly difficult. Moving on. FNAF 3. So this is what Greenland looks like. Why is everything green? I know that we are in an abandoned pizzeria, but at least make things look a bit more dusty and abandoned, not a science lab. So here's the gameplay. When you look left, you can access the settings. Here you can repair the ventilation, the audio, all that stuff. On the right, you can access the cameras. You can toggle between the main cameras and the vent cameras. We only have one animatronic that we need to be aware of. Springtrap. For the other animatronics, we have Phantom Freddy, Watermelon, Foxy, Balloon Boy, Mangle, and the Puppet. The Phantoms don't do anything serious, but they can mess you up. They just jump scare you, peace out, and you have to repair the vents. The phantoms appear in specific locations. Figure out where they are and you'll get immediately jump scared. Springtrap appears often either on the vents or in the pizzeria itself. You can use the audio button to bait Springtrap into that specific location. There is no power supply here, the ambience and the audio cues aren't really something to write home about. The jump scares have the right balance of scariness, especially for the phantoms, but Springtrap's jump scares they're not great. He's not even trying to scare you, he's just like, how you doing? 6 out of 10. Easy, doesn't look great, moving on. FNAF 4. This game is set in a bedroom, the one place we're all familiar with. We're playing as a little child and we're gonna defend ourselves against the nightmares. There are no ways to defend yourself. Just like the third game, you have infinite batteries for a flashlight. Elon Musk should make one of those. You can open and close the doors once you go near them. Here you can also toggle your flashlight if the animatronics are there or not. You also have the closet and you can pretty much do the same things you can do with the door. Then we have the bed and all we can do is just point our flashlight. In this game, you're gonna rely heavily on the audio. There are very few visual cues that determine the location of an animatronic. Speaking of which, we got Nightmare Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, Fredbear, Mango, Balloon Boy, Plush Trap, Nightmare Yon, and Nightmare. There are also Halloween scene designs for some of them. Their jump scares are some of the best and probably the most scariest. They nailed the ambiance with this game. It really feels like we are living our childhood nightmares, which is what I'm doing right now. 9 out of 10, great jump scares and great design. Next, we have FNAF 5, or Sister Location. This game, compared to the others, has a lot more narrative. Each night, you are given different tasks, and you gotta survive through each one of them. And may I introduce the best part of the game? Please enter your name as seen above the keypad. This cannot be changed later. It seems that you had some trouble with the keypad. I see what you were trying to type, and I will auto-correct it for you. One moment. Welcome, Eggs Benedict. The first night is pretty much charity, but the following nights, oh you're gonna die. For the animatronics, we have Funtime Freddy, Foxy, Ballerina, Circus Baby, and Ennard. These animatronics are more futuristic like. Their jump scares are great, especially the ones where they reveal the insides of their face. I like that this game doesn't use the standard format of the other games, where you're just in a fixed location and you gotta survive by whatever means necessary. No, in this game, you are assigned to complete different objectives in different locations. And that's what made this game really unique. The game does have that format after you beat the main game and is considered its own custom night. 
You gotta rely on the audio for some scenarios in the game, other times it's just spamming your left mouse button or dragging your mouse intensely. That's pretty much all I can say about this game without bringing in the story, so 9 out of 10. Great narrative, jump scares, the rest. Finally, we have FNAF 6 or Pizzeria Simulator. On the outside, it looks like a FNAF spin-off game but then this happened. Great. So, I am an owner of a pizzeria and it is my responsibility to decorate stuff, hope that I don't get a lawsuit and attract customers. After the work is done, the work isn't done. So we're back in the standard FNAF gameplay, this time we gotta finish up our chores. You can upgrade stuff so that some things can be more efficient if you have enough money. On your left and right side, there are vents. There are no ways to protect yourselves from animatronics. Just like FNAF 4, you will heavily rely on the audio. There's also this map on the screen where you can toggle audio on specific locations. You can also control the temperature of the room and the fans. Some of the chores that you gotta do make some noise so it can attract the animatronics. For the animatronics, we got Scrap Baby, Lefty, Molten Freddy, and Chip. From Chip and Dale. Let me just sink this one in. Why does Springtrap look like he's from an animated zombie movie? Besides all that, you can also play minigames with the items that you bought. There are secrets that you can access by playing some of them. What makes me love this game is the ending. It's just so cool and epic. This game is the perfect end for the franchise. 10 out of 10, lots of great content, great design, jump scares and all. It's great. Oh, you exist. Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, the first game in the franchise to have this one massive map. I think it looks cool with all the 80s retro stuff, but it doesn't make anything scary. Just a note, I haven't bought this game so I didn't play it, but I have seen videos about this game so all of what I am about to say is all of what I can talk about on the outside. The overall design for each character makes this game feel like it's targeted towards younger audiences, when FNAF is known for being gruesome and dark. What about the gameplay? Well, now we can move around in a first person perspective. We can also enter Glamrock Freddy. Moving around depletes his battery and there are dozens of charging stations for Freddy that are scattered throughout the whole map. There are these robots that are either janitors or guards. If they catch sight of you, they'll alert the nearby animatronics trying to get you. For the animatronics, we have Glamrock Freddy, Chica, Roxanne Wolf, Montgomery Gator, the daycare attendant, DJ Music Man, and... Hi, please take this map. Take a map. Thank you, please enjoy. The jump scares aren't great, but they're not bad too. We also got a human night guard, nothing special, but she just has the funniest jump scare of any horror game. Also, she's trying to get you, but rarely do you ever see her. Just like Pizzeria Simulator, there are also a few mini games that you can play, and just like that game, there are easter eggs that you can access by playing some of them. I'm gonna let this rant in here. Why is Springtrap in the game? He died in the last game. Why is he here? Why do some of the endings have fully animated cutscenes but some of the endings are in a comic book format? Why did the game come out in such a buggy state? Why does this game exist? I know FNAF is one of those franchises that a lot of fans want to continue, especially for me, but the people who came up with this game need to respect the timeline and the entire story of the games. I'm gonna give this game a 7 out of 10. A bit scary, looks a bit challenging, the overall design of the map and the characters just doesn't fit well for a horror game. Now to the spin-offs, the first one, FNAF World. This is an RPG take on the franchise, containing characters from the first game to FNAF 4, alongside some characters that never appeared in these games. You take control of Freddy and explore the world, just like any other turn-based RPG, enemies appear randomly. You can use up to 8 animatronics split into 2 groups of 4. You can unlock new animatronics by simply facing them. There are also bosses. 
that's it. You can buy upgrades and items that can help you. There are multiple areas, each correlating with a specific theme. Just like Pizzeria Simulator, there are a bunch of minigames included. There are a ton of easter eggs that you can access here and there within these. And while you think that this game is an RPG, there are still jump scares in here. It is a Five Nights at Freddy's game after all. 8 out of 10, a lot of content. Not a great RPG, but not a bad one. Lastly, we have Ultimate Custom Night. While I consider this game a spin-off, there are scenarios in the game that deals with the main story of this series. And some are just plain weird. As the title implies, this game is solely one giant custom night. You got all the animatronics from the first game to Pizzeria Simulator, and let me tell you this is definitely one of the hardest games in the series. The hardest one yet. You have a lot more gameplay mechanics, which means you have a lot more responsibility. If you're gonna play this game for the first time, just start off with a low level of difficulty and a few number of animatronics. It's also gonna take a lot of time to figure out the controls, which are really vital since this game is really fast paced. 8 out of 10, sheer insanity, great jump scares, not much content but, you know. So that's the entirety of the FNAF franchise. I definitely missed the old days, back when fan music videos and short animated films were quite popular. Now I just kind of think that the franchise is slowly losing identity. Not because they keep making bad games back to back or they're not doing anything original, it's just because they don't have the same flair as they did back when they were starting out. It's nice to look back on this series, it's definitely one of my childhood classics. Might want to talk about that soon.